Polls show that Americans across the political spectrum believe the divide in our nation is a serious threat. Why does it seem so serious? After all, we've had these same two parties contesting elections for more than 150 years. But today, the nature of partisanship has changed for many Americans. Our culture presents us with a choice of two possible political identities, each with a set of beliefs on a wide variety of topics, from tax policy to the nature of human persons. Once we make a choice, we are told we must conform to every belief or risk banishment from the group as a heretic. While many label this tribalism, it is more appropriately called sectarianism, a moralized identification in which contempt for those on the other side is what holds each party together. This sectarian partisanship infiltrates all aspects of American life, adding tension and bitterness and eliminating real discussion and debate from the public square. The framers of the Constitution designed the federal government to empower Congress while forcing the people's representatives to deliberate and compromise. They believed this was necessary to steer the vast, diverse nation toward unity and avoid tyranny and dissolution. But sectarian partisanship rules out deliberation and compromise, making lawmaking virtually impossible. Even seemingly non-ideological issues, such as transportation policy, are viewed as zero-sum, identity-based competition in which winning is the goal, not the forging of policies for the common good. The ensuing congressional gridlock leaves a power vacuum filled by presidents who act beyond their constitutional power, as well as by activist courts in an unelected administrative state. Sectarian partisanship has also led to questions from both sides about the legitimacy of elections, lawmaking, and the actions of government officials. If we do not find a way to restore the public square and reform government institutions so that Americans are willing to debate, deliberate, and compromise, we could squander this great republic that we've been blessed with. To understand how best to respond, we have to probe deeper into what is happening. Religious participation has been decreasing among all Americans, but there is clearly something different going on with the sectarian left. There, elites have rejected organized religion, especially Christianity, and rejected biblical assumptions about the human person, which provide a critical foundation for America. Like we saw in the French Revolution, if the state, and not God, is considered the source of our most important rights, Life can be discarded for the public good, which is defined by whatever party is in power. The dogma of the sectarian left is less a system of belief than one of unbelief. It demands ambiguous utopian ideals, whose real purpose is to delegitimize the other side. Think of how terms like equity are used to set up unreachable ideals and serve as weapons to tear down, rather than build up, institutions organizations, and individuals. As Catholics, we know we need to counter the rejection of God and the embrace of utopianism. But the correct response is not to give up on our republic, abandon the rule of law, and join the sectarian fight. Neither should we embrace political messianism, which muddles temporal political aims with Christian identity. So, what should Catholics do? Be Catholic first. In another Edify episode, I will explain how, with God's grace, I sought to do this as a pro-life Democrat in the U.S. Congress, and how courageous Catholic witness can not only win souls, but can transform and renew the American Republic. This is former Congressman Daniel Lipinski for Edify. Thank you for watching this video. Please watch my Edify video entitled Catholic First, 